Hi, my name is Francisco and welcome to another video of the marketing research series. And this time I want to talk to you about different types of variables. So let's assume that you, like many students uh, of mine, they did a study or they did, for example, a descriptive survey and they downloaded the raw data and what they have is an Excel sheet full of numbers. But in order for them to calculate, to do any sort of analysis um, in the, with that data set, they need to understand what type of value or what type of variable those numbers are. Because depending on the nature of these variables or their type, it will affect the type of test that you can apply to them. So it's really important to understand which type of variables those are. So let's discuss them all in detail now. There are two broad types of variables categorical variables and continuous variables. So let's first focus on the most elementary ones, which are categorical variables. There are two types of categorical variables, nominal variables and ordinal variables. So let's start with the most basic, which is nominal. When you downloaded your questionnaire, most likely you measured something like uh, gender, or you had a question that asked something like, which type of product do you currently have? And it was a multiple choice question where people had to click on one, right? In those types of questions, um, what the type of variable that it generates is nominal data. Why is nominal data? Because the first characteristic of nominal data is that the value only refers to an object of investigation. For example, imagine that um, you had gender and then you had female and male, let's say. And then once you download on the column for gender, you have one, two, two, one, one, two, two, one. And every time you had a male, you had the value of one. And every time you had female, you had the value of two. Well, that is nominal data. And why? Because if you have a value of two, which is referring, for example, to females, that doesn't mean that females are twice better than men, which has a value of one. It's only to say every time you have a two, it's a female. Every time you have a, um, a one, it's a male. It doesn't matter the order. That's another property. So if males were coded as two and females are one, that really doesn't matter. Yeah, and the numbers don't represent magnitude. So they don't represent magnitude. They only refer to an object and their order is completely indifferent. So if you have any multiple choice question, the type of data that's going to generate is uh, uh, nominal. And these will include like, for example, which product you currently have, which product you prefer, uh, what is your gender, what is your level of education. So all of those in all of those types of questions, the value that the variable that will generate is nominal data. And for nominal data, since it's uh, um, it's very elementary and it, it doesn't represent magnitude, you, there's not much statistics that you can do with it. You can only do like frequencies or chi-square tests, which is a test of association between categorical variables and um, not much more than that. A second type of data that is categorical um, is what we call ordinal data. Now, ordinal has similar properties to nominal with the difference that we know the order of the values but we don't know the distance between these values. It's kind of like, for example, imagine if I tell you um, company A is the market leader in electronics, company B is the second in the market, and company C is the third in the market. If I just tell you this, you know, okay, I know the order in which they are in the market, but I don't know exactly how much company A is better than company B or how much company B is better than company C. It's kind of like, um, I'm really into Formula One, and uh, in Formula One, imagine if I told you that, uh, that Hamilton won a race, and then I tell you that um, Vettel was uh, in second place, and Verstappen was in third place. I'm telling you the order of these events, of and how they finished, but you don't know exactly if those cars are really close to each other, if they're really far from each other. So um, some examples of how it's applied in marketing or in, you know, if you're doing this in your study, it's like usually when you allow the respondents to do rankings, um, whenever people have to mention, for example, their social class or, uh, or also another common application is when the consumer on the study has to do, for example, preference ranking, what they like first and what they like second. Those will all be um, ordinal data. All right, so these are um, categorical data, nominal and ordinal. But now let's discuss continuous variables, which are two types, interval and racial data. Now, the difference between interval to ordinal and uh, nominal is that interval data 
the values now do represent magnitudes. In other words, the larger the value, the stronger that something is or the, or the more frequent someone, someone does something. So the larger the value, the greater the magnitude. The second characteristic of interval data is that the distance between the values are, are exactly the same. We assume that they are the same, which is different from ordinal where we didn't know exactly the, the distance between these values. And there is a third um, characteristic of, uh, of interval data, which is really important, which is we assume that we don't know the zero point of that scale. Well, the best example to illustrate that to you, which is a very common one in marketing, is every time when we, or very often when we measure consumer perception or consumer behavior, we measure it in, in a liquor type scale, ranging, for example, from never to rarely to often to very often to all always or liquid scales for satisfaction from very dissatisfied to dissatisfied to indifferent to satisfied to very satisfied in all of those scales the larger the value the, the greater the magnitude so when you have a scale like this the very dissatisfied will be labeled as a one uh, dissatisfied will be labeled as a two indifferent labeled as a three satisfied labeled as a four very satisfied labeled as a five so if you measure that for example on your study once you download the the the, the raw data you're going to see all of these variations of these values but the higher the value the more satisfied that particular respondent is but as i mentioned in uh, interval data we don't know the zero point what does that mean exactly is where does very dissatisfied start? So maybe very dissatisfied for you is very different to very dissatisfied is for me. So we assume that we don't know the zero point of these scales and that's an improper, important property because um, it differentiates itself from the next type of uh, continuous data which is racial data. Yeah, so just to finish off interval data, the main applications of it in marketing or the main examples are all of those scales that can measure attitude, frequency, all of those liquor type scales that will measure consumer perception, consumer behavior, opinions, and so on. And to finish off, racial variables, which is very much like interval. The only difference is that there's a clear zero point. So some examples is, for example, weight and um, length. So if you have weight, you have zero weight, you have one uh, kilo or you have five kilos and the greater the value, the heavier something is, right? Which is the exact same thing with, um, with interval data. And also the gaps between the values are exactly the same. So the gap between five and 10 kilos, which is five, is the exact same gap between 35 and 40, which is also five. So there you go, my friend. So these are the different types of uh, measurements. Hopefully that was useful to you somehow. Um, don't forget here in the description, there's a lot of other resources that can help you with marketing research, with thesis writing, with uh, statistics and more. Um, subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined. And yeah, all the absolute best in your life. Take care and bye-bye.